What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, giving you guys a quick card discussion on one of my favorite pieces of spicy anti meta tech for this format. This is a card that I think is absolutely phenomenal, and it does not seem to get a lot of notoriety. This is not a card where people are really discussing it that much or doing any type of uh, videos on it. It doesn't really seem to be getting a lot of play, but regardless, it is a card that I truly believe absolutely can destroy a lot of what is meta right now in Yu-Gi-Oh! And um, I felt like doing a card discussion pre-YCS uh, Dusseldorf for a couple of reasons. Number one, there may be some of you guys who are playing like slower anti-meta decks and you're looking for a couple of like good side deck cards that people might not know about and might not actually know how to duel against. And obviously there's a little self-serving there because if it does see play at Dusseldorf, I can turn around and be like, see guys, I told you that this card was great. You should have listened. But what card am I talking about? The card I am talking about is Necro Valley. You guys know it's a super old card. It's a DM card. I mean, this thing is from like Pharaonic Guardian and it's definitely deserving of like OG status, but I am going to go ahead and read the current text of the card and I don't want you to roll your eyes and say, come on, Cap G, who doesn't know what Necro Valley does? Mainly because Necro Valley has been errated seven times, which, <laughs> I mean, that has to put it in a class of its, of its own, right? I mean, how many cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! get a ratted in the first place let alone a ratted seven times like again it's a dm card so it's been or it's been around the block when it comes to getting its card uh, its card text changed and a lot of you guys out there may have been thinking about the old versions of necro valley if you haven't played the game in a couple of years or something like that so i'm just going to go ahead and read what the seventh and current text of necro valley says so necro valley currently says all Gravekeeper monsters gain 500 attack and defense. Cards in the graveyard cannot be banished. Negates any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place. Negates any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard. So that very last line of text is actually something that's completely new to Necro Valley about uh, the, the line of text about changing attributes and uh, typing in the graveyard and how you negate that. Not exactly sure why Konami did that. I mean, <laughs> maybe they just wanted to hurt element savers more as if that deck didn't have enough problems but <laughs> that's the only like application that I can think of where that actually becomes relevant but the big buff the Necro Valley and when this card got its um its recent release in Dual Saga that's what it got it got a massive buff that made the card so much better the big buff the Necro Valley really wasn't about the attributes and effect changing lockdown from the graveyard it was about the fact that instead of Necro Valley making it so cards couldn't be moved uh, from effects other than themselves now Necro Valley just says cards cannot be moved from the graveyard period and that is huge because it used to be for instance, during like 5Ds when Gravekeepers were actually meta and, you know, they won a YCS and they were seeing a lot of uh, high level play. During that era, Necro Valley did not actually stop things like Glow Up Bulb. It didn't stop monsters that inherently summon themselves from the graveyard. It didn't stop cards that would move themselves. And this would be applicable in today's meta because things like Metaphose Fusion, cards like, um, for instance, Sky Striker H Ray, cards that inherently move themselves from the graveyard, oh, old Necro Valley would not be able to stop stop those but now all of those cards are negated we're definitely going to talk about you know sky strikers among other things in this video but let's go ahead and talk about the applications of necro valley because honestly if i look around the format and i look around you know what's seeing play at the high levels what people consider you know some of the best decks in the game right now i think and this is in no personal order I'm just going to, you know, talk about some of the decks that I think are the best in the game. So I would say probably, the, you know, Danger Thunder Dragon, Guard Dragon Crusadia, Salaman Great, and Sky Striker. If we did uh, maybe six best decks of the format, I feel like those four would probably be in there. Honestly, I think that those are, you know, top or those are four of the best five decks in the game. And when I look at the, you know, the Necro Valley card, I'm just like, dude, it shuts down all of those decks. It doesn't necessarily take away everything in their deck, but it hits a good amount of cards. For instance, let's look at the Thunder Dragon deck, the Danger Thunder Dragon, and it's not that that deck likes to move a bunch of cards in its graveyard around or that it summons all that much from its graveyard. However, especially with the evolution post ban list, the, has be the deck has become super, super reliant on banishing cards. This is actually the reason why you'll sometimes see people uh, side deck artifact Lancia against Thunder Dragons. With all the chaos -y cards and chaos -y engines that have been added to the deck, the deck is like more reliant on banishing cards from its graveyard than ever. You see things like Thunder Dragon Duo 
that card is stuck around from last format in the Thunder Dragon deck, but now you're seeing, you know, Chaos Dragon Levenir. People are not just playing one or two copies of Levenir. That card is being 100% maxed out in the current version of Thunder Dragons. If your opponent cannot summon Levenir, that could be the difference between you, like, living and, you know, dying in a turn, because even if you force a Thunder Dragon player to go first, that is a card that can take something out of your hand, so at least that's kind of nice. You also take away their ability to use the baby Chaos Dragon, Dragons, the white and black dragon neither one of those are going to be able to hit the field and that's important because those are like just some of the best extenders in Yu-Gi-Oh right now there's a reason that you're seeing the baby dragons kind of like being splashed and everything it's because not only do they serve as link fodder because they are naturally good with going into the guard dragons but they're good for link fodder because not only can they uh, trigger your thunder dragon monsters when you summon them but in addition to that like they float into each other so they're just f fantastic so you're shutting down all those plays and lastly don't forget current thunder dragons a lot of players have dumped the spell cards. They're basically just playing Light of Sekka. Light of Sekka can still be activated while Necro Valley is on the field. However, the graveyard effect, where you banish it from the graveyard to potentially fix your hand, that's not going to resolve as well. So I feel like you can hit maybe about five, four cards in the Thunder Dragon matchup that can all be key extenders against your opponent. And now your opponent's going to be heavily reliant on the danger side. And really at that point, it's just, can you not let them get a Nightmare Phoenix? or a Nightmare Unicorn off, because if you can do that, you're in good shape. But when you look at the Crusadia Guard Dragon deck, I think it shines in this matchup as well. The Crusadia Guard Dragon deck, it's not going to be as good as Thunder Dragons, but there's a good amount of, uh, you know, kind of cards that move themselves from the graveyard and banishing that that deck does actually, uh, it, it suffers if you get Necro Valley up early against them. Number one, the Crusadia Aborea. She's a card that can banish herself from the graveyard. She's very, she's basically the Crusadia Balanx. Like she's kind of like Salomon Great Balanx, where she can protect one of the Crusadia monsters from battle or destruction. She doesn't activate, which makes her incredibly difficult to uh, counter, essentially, but she can't banish herself. So it means your opponent will never get that protection. If your opponent goes for the Crusadia Draco, which is one of their best extenders because it pulls one of their cards from the graveyard uh, back to their hand, kind of like a, re a warrior returning alive effect that effect's not going to be able to resolve if they play world legacy succession they can't use that and it shuts down red eyes metal darkness dragon i mean they simply cannot use the effect so essentially you're really hindering the guard dragon side of that deck because we know that red eyes is the card they want to use over and over and over again and red eyes simply can't be used even against sky striker now this is the matchup where i thought all right well come on come on cap i mean sky striker barely play any monsters sky striker should be absolutely oh i mean they should be a deck that can play around this uh entirely but no that's not true sky striker will not be able to use kagari they won't be able to use ray's effect from the graveyard which that's important because cutting them off from ray means that now you can just run over their monsters their link monsters willy-nilly their link monsters are not very powerful and you don't have to worry about them getting a ray back and then summoning kagari during your turn getting another monster like all of those plays their entire kind of resource train is shut down even if your opponent play some of the kind of uh I, I guess unorthodox sky striker cards like shark cannon i call it unorthodox but it's kind of like a one of uh there was a time where people weren't playing it now that salaman greats have invaded the meta i think that most people are playing shark cannon that card can't be used they also cannot get metaphos fusion out of their graveyard so if they dump it into the graveyard or if they use it for area zero that baby is stuck in the graveyard for the entire game and then most importantly multi-role cannot resolve multi-role is a card that one once again tries to move cards from the graveyard and then the last matchup is my deck salaman greats <laughs> this is actually what would honestly led me to this entire discussion i played against a gravekeeper player who actually just destroyed me i mean he got necro value on field and i could not play Yu-Gi-Oh. you guys know that the entire concept of salaman greats is about reincarnation it's about monsters coming back from the graveyard, being reborn into more powerful versions of themselves. That's why every monster basically in this damn deck summons itself from the graveyard or has some type of effect that activates in the graveyard. And our entire deck is basically hard countered by this. I, I am not, this is not hyperbole to say that Necro Valley can beat an entire Salaman Great deck by itself. I mean, I just want to list the cards, guys, that just will not activate. Sunlight Wolf, you can't use either effect of that. 
Jack Jaguar can't summon itself. Falco can't summon itself. It can't get any of your spells or traps back from your graveyard. You can't summon Spinny if you play Salaman Great Mole. You can't use the Pot of Aris effect. Foxy can't summon itself from the graveyard. You can't use either effect of Foxer because you can't move a monster back from your uh, from your uh, graveyard to your extra deck for the uh, the Foxer MST effect. And obviously you can't summon it. Even will the Salaman Great can't summon monsters from the graveyard and something like Salaman Great Roar, which obviously is like you know our best defensive card. You can't set that by itself or you can't set that from its own effects from the graveyard as well. I mean, look how many cards I just named, guys. It's like <laughs> I literally named like half of our deck. Necro Valley is a free win against Salaman Greats, as much as I hate to say that because I love my Salaman Great deck, but honestly, Necro Valley is just so good right now. Now, you guys might be asking cap where exactly can i play necro valley and i'm not gonna act like it's a card that you can splash everywhere because you do have to think about the fact that yeah you're gonna be not using your graveyard much at all you're not going to be able to use called by the grave against your opponent which by the way this card also stops called by the grave so your opponent can't use that against you my best recommendations for where to use necro valley other than obviously grave keepers would probably be in a deck like true draco or subterra guru control both of those decks are super stunning they're not relying on the graveyard and one thing that i really like about those two decks is they both inherently run terraforming so you know you can obviously get to this card early and if you know you're playing against like salaman greats yeah you might be sacrificing getting to a hidden city or getting to a dragonic diagram early but i'm sorry i mean it's much better to just literally take the free win against a deck like salaman great than to even you know get a key piece of your deck and uh get rolling i'd rather just go ahead and take the free win so what do you guys think of of uh, necro valley i was gonna say what do you guys think of grave keepers it's legitimately a good card can't be ran in everything i would say that you got to run kind of a slow control based deck and if you're running terraforming obviously that makes it better but this card is legitimately fantastic ever since its last buff whatever you guys think of uh, the card leave it in the comment section below and if you guys think of any other ideas for where you can run necro valley leave that in the comment section below as well thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos